Sarah Sisdi, Director of the State Assets Recovery Agency, Sarah in Guyana, and a member of the PNC political party who presently holds the presidency. When asked about how the country managed to sell exploration rights in a disputed zone off its coastline, he responded, it's too early for that, we're building up a case. There was no denial in the reply that the zone is disputed, only that a case is being built. But what sort of case is Sarah building? Against whom? Are they waiting for productions to begin, or does Guyana have a guarantee that the license will sway in their favor? In fact, explorations for oil began in Guyana since 2008 when the PPP was in power. Companies such as Exxon, Mobile, Repsol, Century Guyana Limited and CGX, a Canadian oil company, were all scoping out the disputed area. It took some years, but oil was discovered in 2015 by Exxon. In that same year, the PPP lost election to the PNC slash APNU slash AFC because President Donald Ramutar of the PPP was in conflict with the National Assembly over spending cuts. Because of his defiance, a motion of no confidence was called by the Assembly and the President decided to dissolve the legislature in 2014 and called instead for early elections to be held in January of 2015. That's when the PNC, APNU and the AFC got together and took the majority of seats. It was a political move that the PPP never saw coming. They lost and President Granger of the coalition parties took leadership of the nation in May of 2015 and the fairy tale as one of the Exxon executives calls it came into full bloom. The company claims that the same year they found high quality oil bearing sandstone reservoirs off the coastline. President Granger of the new government received US $18 million from Exxon and the first well, Liza 1, which is 26,800 square kilometers, was drilled in the Stabrook block. It is expected to commence full productions of an anticipated 700 million barrels in February of 2020. Since then, many other wells have been drilled by others, and this has attracted oil producers and traders from around the world. The International Monetary Fund, located in Washington, D.C., an organization that works to oversee global financial control of countries got on board and predicts that the small nation is expected to receive an 86% economic boost should all go according to plan. Guyana quickly accepted its offer of management and established reserve accounts in the USA. It has also taken the step to establish a sovereign wealth fund to help direct its own finances, hopefully by the year 2025. A major factor looming over the nation is still the dispute of land rights with its neighbor Venezuela. This is a conflict which has existed since the 1800s and the undesirable lack to arbitrate with Venezuela, initially by the British and now by Guyana, has taken the process to new, almost disrespectful international laws with the USA now changing sides to join the British and Guyana and threaten Venezuela with military intervention. Back against the wall, Maduro called on Russia, Cuba, Iran, Syria, and China to help out. It's a messy, muddy, and oily situation because China is also drilling in the disputed zone. Obviously, they will not turn guns on themselves. On top of that, both Guyana and Venezuela are still presently deeply embroiled in political upheavals of their own. In the case of Venezuela, President Nicolas Maduro is a nationalist, as was his predecessor, Hugo Chavez. In 1976, Chavez, in an attempt to reclaim the country's assets, nationalized its oil and created a company called Petroleus de Venezuela, PDVSA. They began to sell the resource to other nations, including the Caribbean, at a lower rate. This caused a conflict with America, one of the largest oil consumers in the world. In retaliation, the USA began implementing sanctions against the developing nation, reducing the supply of food, medicine, travel, and other materials. In 2013, Maduro defeated his opponent on 
Enrique Capriles by 1.5% of the votes during elections. Capriles demanded a recount, which was promised but never came. Instead, in that same year, Maduro established a new agency to handle all social programs. He also brought into effect a law that will allow him to rule by decree to annex any attempt of corruption. He continued to govern until the next election in 2018, which he also claimed to have won. The USA became tired and turned their sanctions again on Venezuela, this time sanctioning seven of the country's officials. Maduro again asked to rule by decree, and it was granted to him by the country's National Assembly. America threatened military intervention, and Maduro beefed up his arsenal. Then the USA made an unprecedented move and went ahead and made the opposition leader Juan Guaido, president of Venezuela, alongside President Maduro. Now the nation has been deliberately and successfully divided into two parties at loggerheads with each other and with the USA looking on. Meanwhile, oil is not well. I mean, all is not well. For a few weeks, Tullo Oil, one of the companies investing in Guyana's Jetro and Joe oil wells located in the Orange Duke block, has been reporting declines in their share of value due to the discovery of heavy crudes with a high sulfur content. Tullo, who was scheduled to produce large quantities in the area commencing in 2020, has changed their forecast and seen their stock value drop to $155.60, which they claim is a two-year low. Now they will not be producing to the promised levels or spending the monies anticipated in 2020. Elections for Guyana will loom again in 2020. It's rumored that opposition leader President non-elect Guaido promised to turn over the land rights to Guyana if he gets help to win the Venezuela race, which is not due until 2024. Maduro has promised to put him in jail for treason and the people are fighting and protesting against each other in the streets. The USA, who was sitting by watching the divide and conquer scheme play out, just got its president impeached and now it's up to the Senate to keep him or remove him from the White House before their elections also in 2020 and Dr. Clive Thomas, director of SARA and member of the AFC. When asked about how Guyana managed to sell exploration rights in a disputed zone off its coastline, responded, it's too early for that. We're building a case. But, Dr. Thomas, if a case is on the way, shouldn't sales have ceased pending investigations? There was no denial in the reply that the zone is disputed.